Hey. Planet Arium. Planet Arium. Let me say it once. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. Uh, I'm Nicole Gallucci. I am your host with CosmoQuest. And joining me is my co-host, George Bracey. Hello. Hi. And we are going to be talking about the making of a planetarium show, specifically the Cosmic Castaways Planetarium Show from Science on the Half Sphere. And so we have joining us right from the Ward Beecher Planetarium. You can actually see their dome in the background there. We have John Feldmeyer and Patrick Durrell. Good day, eh? Hello. Yeah. Hey, hey. We, keep, we, click, we click Canadians here. Cosmic Absolutely. <laughs> Some of us are Canadians. Yeah, well. well. As long as you don't say globular. Globular cluster. Then no, I don't do that. Eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> so as usual, you guys watching, if you can share the link, that will help us out. If you want to ask a question, there are several places you can do that. We're using Comment Tracker to track comments on the YouTube page. If you're watching this on YouTube, mm -hmm. that should show up there. If you're watching on Google+, Plus, um, those comments will show up as well, except for the event page itself, which I'm monitoring separately. And again, if mm -hmm. someone figures out ha how, how to hack that and make that work in Comment Tracker again, I will love you forever. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be watching that separately. Um, and then there's that new Q&A, ask a question feature. It's not that new. I just haven't been doing this for a while. So <laughs> if you ask a question there, uh, we will see that too. So you can ask a question, leave a comment, say hello. All that fun stuff as we go along. Um, so, what do you want to start off with the trailer for the video? Maybe? Sure, that'd be good. Can do okay. that. So we are just going to start off with the trailer for Cosmic Castaways. Although it is a uh, planetarium show, there is a flat screen version available on YouTube, uh, and I'm going to attempt to show the trailer now with sound and all that good stuff. So I just need a second to. Yay. Get that ready. Yay! What's <laughs> up? Start. All right, so there's video. Ba, ba, ba. We really can't do this with interpreted dance. <laughs> yeah, they're not ready for that. No. No. Neither are we. No. Oh, for crying out loud, the sound isn't working. <laughs> no, it's, it's on the big screen for the viewers, Georgia. Um, oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I, oh, well, now I see it on the big screen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you control right. your own, I control what the audience sees. I'm sorry, guys. That totally, I finally got it working right before the stupid, stupid. Yeah, Murphy's Law Strikes. I, I give up. Um, I'm going to link to the trailer and... You See the trailer. You just good. have to watch it yourself. That's right. Hi, PG. And yes, yeah, so you all missed out on the lovely voice of, of, of Dr. Pamela Gay, who we all know and love, who, who narrates it. Um, so uh, the, the trailer, I just posted a link to it on the event page. Um, sorry, guys. I, I, try, I try to make that flower do my bidding. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> no, no worries. Oh, yeah. So we, would you like us to sort of summarize what the show is? Yes, please. That would be excellent. Okay, so uh, Cosmic Castaways is a show about um, stars that are kicked out of galaxies. And so it, over the history of the universe, galaxies sometimes interact with each other due to the force of gravity. 
my two hands are going to be galaxies because I forgot any props. <laughs> so galaxies can go by each other, and what sometimes happens is the gravity of one galaxy can actually pull stars out of the other galaxy. And those stars, some of the stars fall back into the galaxy, but some of them are basically lost forever, and so they drift in the spaces between galaxies. Uh, we think this happens everywhere in the universe, and it's a topic of research that I and Dr. Durrell both study in different ways. So this is actually what we do for a living scientifically. At the same time, we have this beautiful planetarium behind us. This is the Ward Beecher Planetarium. And Ward Beecher does three things at the same time. It's where we teach Astro 101, or uh, classes for college classes for astronomy. We teach K through 12 students in here who come on field trips. And then we also do shows for the general public. So this room actually gets a lot of workout. And one of the things we do is we show planetarium shows. And sort of right behind us, there's this boring little box. And that is called a full dome projector. And it is a little box. But on the box, there's a fisheye lens that lets you display a show basically in 360 degrees. And so these are called all dome shows. And there are some great all dome shows out there that we, you know, we buy from companies or other scientists make and we show them here. And we had this idea of what if we could make our own show about the science that we do. And that's what Cosmic Castaways was about. It was sort of this crazy idea of could we put together a show that talked about these stars that are kicked out of galaxies. So that's leave a anything out? No? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pat, you're supposed to say something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they Thank share you. they that share was... a brain. They really that covers it. Yeah. You're sort of a hot mind. It's a hive mind, exactly. Yeah. We totally have one here. We get it. Okay, very good. All right. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, different uh, shows out there and all sorts of different topics, but you know, with us doing a topic which is a little bit off the beaten path, you know, this idea of stars that get ripped out of galaxies, yeah. we're able to sort of you know develop a show. We sort of have the background behind it. It's like, okay, what kind of things would we like the general public to know about what we do? So that sort of formed the framework for the show itself. So it's kind of a neat little subject that, you know, you know, you're not going to rely on other people to develop a show about that. So why not do it ourselves? I mean, we have, we have the people, we have the expertise, uh, and, uh, you know, really helps pull it along. And then at the end of the day, we have a 22, 23 minute show that you know, not only are we happy to show in our own planetarium, but the idea is to make it available free, mm -hmm. there's a good word, free, free, to anyone else who has a full dome planetarium projector so people at other planetariums can get a look at it and, and see what we've done. So there's actually three groups of people that can use the show, right? Other, other planetariums, whether they're big professional ones, or there's a lot of small, like high school planetariums mm -hmm. that have these sorts of projectors and they're always starved for content. Um, obviously uh, the general public, that's one of the reasons we stuck it up on YouTube so that people can watch it whenever they feel like it. And then finally, you know, we give out a flat screen version in a DVD form. So you know, like if a teacher is interested in this topic, we can send it along to them. And so that's sort of the basic idea. Now the next step is we're trying to develop educational materials. And I say I, meaning actually Nicole and Georgia, <laughs> Georgia yeah. because we're not experts no at that part. Yeah. Um, but you know, we want, we want it to be as useful to people as possible, because we're now in this place where we've, we've finished the show we're pretty happy with it, but now we want to make it useful yeah. to as many different groups of people as possible. Because to us now, you know, we can put the show in any, slice it any way we want, and give it out to people, and it's just how can it be most useful. So um, we just got a we just got a Star Lab portable planetarium here in our department. Uh, we didn't get the digital version, unfortunately, but I have worked with the digital ones before, and that again is something that is content starved, I think. Um, you can make your own shows in Stellarium or, some, or something like that. But uh, could, would it work on a projector like that? Because that's also a fisheye lens. Yeah, the idea is that, yes, you can. As long as it's one of these, uh, as long as it's a fisheye lens and you have a computer with software that will morph these images up into the 180 degrees of, of, the, of the hemispheric dome it is really what you need. I mean, the only thing, but the only thing different about these projectors than, say, a projector lots of other people may have at home is that you can't just take a regular DVD and a regular show, uh, like you might find on YouTube, and just 
put it up on the dome and expect it to look good. You actually right. have to warp it properly. Yeah. So it still is a little bit, you know, a number of, uh, you know, extra steps involved in making these shows. But, uh, you know, the, it, it comes out really well on the, on the finished dome. And, yeah, a lot of these smaller ones, um, I mean, one of the things is there's, there's a lot of big planetaria. Some people might be more familiar with the big ones like Adler, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and places like that. But, you know, there's a lot of these smaller portable planetariums. You brought up the Star Lab. There's a lot of these portable planetariums that, you know, these people have a very tight budget. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to have the thousands of dollars it often takes to purchase some of these shows, these very well-done, well-directed shows that some other people put out. So sort of our goal was to make a show that would be distributed to free so that, you know, someone with a small planetarium, a digital star lab, uh, you know, or a digitarium or, you know, sorry, digitalis uh, planetarium system, you know, can actually make use of this show and they're not being left out. It's not like, oh, well, we don't, we're a small planetarium, we can't do that. Well, the answer is yes, we can. Yeah. And, and that's sort of the idea here. Right. Yeah, because it's all Creative Commons licensed. So creative everybody. Commons yeah, license, exactly. exactly. The whole thing is Creative Commons. Mm -hmm. You know, partially because we kind of believe in that, but also because um, we should say, you know, let us thank our sp funding sponsors, right? Yeah. This was funded by the National Science Foundation, and so, you know, basically the taxpayers, everybody paid for it. Mm -hmm. And so we're happy to put it out there in any form, you know, that people wanted it. Yeah, so this is your show, people. Yes. Everybody. Yes, it is. It is your show. It is. It is everybody's show. And, and a call out to the NSA if anybody's watching. Hi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Just, 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 you know, <laughs> you know being strong, being friendly. Being friendly, you know. Oh, just, yeah, being Very good. So, so what was it like taking your research then and translating that for a public audience and then translating that visually for the dome? So it was hard. Actually, because of course, when you when it's your field, and Nicole knows what I'm talking about, you kind of you love it. Mm -hmm. You're kind of obsessive compulsive about it. You know everything about it. And when you do a show for the general public, one of the things you really want to do is they've never heard of any of this stuff, and you've been thinking about it for years. And so what you have to do is focus on just a few topics, and that's something that that we kind of believe in really strongly with the show is. Really, it boils. I, you know, I can say we're studying how stars are kicked out of galaxies, right? Is that we want to keep the basic structure as simple as possible, and and not overload people with fourteen different pieces of vocabulary that they've never heard before, mm -hmm. right? That no one learns anything that way. All you do is sound really smart, and nobody actually watches your show. So there was that side. So we had to keep the script really structurally. Uh, we had to think about that a lot. We actually spent more time writing the script than anything else, believe it or not. Okay. But yeah. then, once that was done, you want to make the show as beautiful as possible. You want to make the show interesting as possible. And you know, there, you know, a lot of that work came from our team. You know, this is one of these things where I was sort of the cat herder, and um, it's really the team, namely our our planetarium staff here. They came up with some of the great visuals. They came up with the soundtrack, which I think is really kind of unique for this particular show. Yeah. Um, and then we also had colleagues from other universities that gave us their best images and animations. Uh, you know, we should do a shout out to Chris Vihos at Case Western, who yeah. basically does interacting galaxies for a living, and he gave us all of his animations. And that that having that great visual material was just as important. So we kind of needed a good script, and we needed good pictures. Yeah, I mean, really, really, the good a good team is sort of the idea behind it. Uh, this would not have worked as well as it did if it was just John and myself doing this. Yeah, it would have failed. It would yeah, have it would have failed miserably. Right. Uh, and 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 also Pamela helped a lot with the script. Obviously, uh, she's very good at that. Uh, you know, to put it together into a concise story that other people can really enjoy and sort of get into. Again, with this backbone of, you know, let's just concentrate on a few things. Let's yeah. not do a 20-minute show where we're racing and spitting out every, you know, buzzword. fancy word and buzzword we can possibly <laughs> All get All the out. jargon. So, but this also carries on with, you know, I guess later on we'll talk about the educational materials. Uh, you two, uh, you know, Nicole, Georgia, I mean, you guys have, you know a lot about this, the, the educational side of things that we just don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's all part of, you know, 
having good people who know what they're doing in different aspects. And I think, you know, that's one of the things I like about this project with Cosmic Castaways, is you sort of have this small group of people who all together made the show. You know, it really is a, it really is a team effort. Because yeah. uh, I just sit back, you know, even though I do this research, I just sit back and look at some of the stuff going on going, that's really awesome. I would never have thought of doing that. <laughs> you know, and that's that's the idea of doing science. So you, as you went through the process of creating this, did you do any, I don't know, like beta testing or sort of try it out on, you know, your sort of average guy in the street to see if you were, you know, hitting it at the right level or... Yeah, know, we, we definitely kind of did. Kind of I mean, again, this is the joy of us having this box behind us is we could show parts of it to, um, we could show parts of it to our classes we could show parts to you know people. We could inflict it on certain planetarium audiences. We actually did some marketing research, though. Oh, I think if we did it again, I would do a little bit more. But we we sort of did that. You know, what one word you know made you think of Cosmic Castaways? What did you like about the show? What did you not like? What was confusing? So we we I would actually encourage people if they can to do that. It, you know, think of this more as sort of an iterative process. Yeah. Um, our plantarium engineer really liked this phrase about that, I guess George Lucas said it and many other people have said it too, which is projects are never finished, they're just abandoned. And yeah. right now Cosmic Castaways, so you know, it was a baby and now it's sort of a grouchy teenager that we would like to kick out of the house and have it go off to college. But we, 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 we did all sorts of tweaking and adjusting as we went to sort of see what worked and what didn't. Yeah. Any changes that stick out as, you know, interesting or something that surprised you and thought, you know, oh my God, we can't do that? I think one of the things we realized is that, like, um, finding the right animation sequence and the right image sometimes takes some work. So sometimes we put in a picture that was okay. It was like a placeholder. And then later on, somebody would say, hey, I found this image. Or, you know, hey, you know, this scene really, you know, look at this thing. Right, um, and so we would actually. This is the great thing. It's a digital file, right? So you can take out pieces and put pieces yeah. back in. And so uh, Kurt has, over time, added a number of different animations. Um, and so the show evolves just a tiny little bit now. I think it's mostly done. I don't think Kurt really wants to make it adjusted anymore. No, our, it's not. Uh, you know, we don't want people out there to think that you know, in four years' time, we're going to get rid of the old version, totally remake it with new graphics, with the Ring of Fire explosions and those kinds of things, and, and put it out there. And as, why not? Well, we haven't really discussed. That's super like a director's yeah. cut. Totally different. Yeah, we have yeah. a director's cut. Yeah, the director's cut. I the still wish we had a. Oh I still God. wish we had a gag reel. And yeah, that was we, the one oh thing gosh. I wish we had. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Sort of doing the a, one like thing a, I wish we had. Okay, so sorry. sorry. Kind of oh. gag reel. All right, the next one. The next the one next definitely one. a gag reel. <laughs> Rare audio of Pamela cursing. Uh. <laughs> 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 la, la, she la, never la, lets la. herself be recorded doing that. <laughs> yes. oh, I would, I would want full dome video of, of us right around the table throwing ideas and you know oh throwing papers across the table. What the heck is this? That would be the way to go. Yeah, that'd be fun. awesome. We have a question from uh, Tom Nath. Uh, it says, "Would this work with Microsoft's worldwide telescope setup?" Do you know anything about that? I have not yet installed Windows on my Mac, although I will at some point because Worldwide Telescope is awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys have played around with that. And you know, we haven't that. put the okay. show in that format, but we actually have no problems putting the show in any format. Okay. Um, I think we have about the idea is that um, for those of people who want to look for the show, the easiest places are YouTube. You can just Google mm -hmm. Cosmic Castaways. But on Science on the Half Sphere, which is a, a piece of Pamela and Nicole's big uh, you know, CosmoQuest website. CosmoQuest. CosmoQuest. It is cool. I'm here to say CosmoQuest baby for some reason. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel like now a commercial. It's our whiny um, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So um, we, we're basically putting all the different formats of mm -hmm. the show we're making. Because this is one kind of frustrating thing about uh, planetarium projectors is they're not plug and play. It's not like there's like one DVD format that will work. There are about 16 different formats. Yeah, different, different people use different uh, 
different uh, codecs, people use different formats, right. there's all sorts of things going on. So what we did is we sort of made Cosmic Castaways available in a couple of the most common uh, formats. And uh, we do it, which is somewhat, somewhat becoming more traditional now with uh, people rele other releasing full dome shows is they release all of the individual in images called the Dome Masters. And then right. so someone could actually download, you need to hack the internet connection for this, but you can download all the Dome Masters and then you're, you have the ability at your own site to you know render it into the proper format that will work for your projector. Yeah. So I mean, this eventually we'll put it in as many formats as we want. It's just we started with the most common formats first, yeah. and then you know we'll keep adding on um, because now it's at the point where we can just well I don't have to push it. Kurt just pushes you know render he, you know it runs overnight, and then we put it up on the website the next day. Yeah, we we haven't we haven't done a lot to, to specifically address the question. We haven't been playing around with Worldwide Telescope. I've seen it. It looks rather impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't even have a Windows machine. You so I, I haven't played with it in my office or anything, so I'm, I'm not as familiar with the, uh, the formats there. But uh, I'm but, sure there might be other people listening who say, well, I know exactly how that But we, we'd be happy to do that. That's not yeah. a problem. We did, um, I was at Dot Astronomy last month, which was at the Microsoft Research Center in Boston, and we all show up with our Macs. <laughs> Yeah. And they actually showed us all how to install Windows as a dual boot just so we could play with Worldwide Telescope. Awkward. It was great. What a, what a, it was great because one of the guys, people were doing it. They're like, Worldwide Telescope's so awesome. I will install Windows just for Worldwide Telescope. And all these astronomers are going, hold me. Yeah, yeah. So it is possible. It well, is possible. At least they were open to the fact yeah. that they understood that people were going to come in with Max. I exactly. think that was actually pretty cool. It was. It was quite fun. It was quite fun. Yeah, I'm just looking at the. Um, so I'm, I put a link to the Science on the Half Sphere site on the Ved page. Um, complete Dome Masters, all 22 gigs available upon request. Wow. <laughs> so you guys. That's yeah, awesome. so if you yeah. have 22 gigs you want, uh, we yeah. can we can fill your disk for you. Awesome. So what? Um, how long did it take time-wise to for the whole production, and mm. maybe how long does it take to actually render this each time? I know you so, said you just press a button, but yeah. Um, now, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the whole show from the basically, you know, years ago I wrote it in a grant, right? And and Nicole knows what this is like, but for for people who aren't astronomers. You write in a grant, I plan to do this wonderful thing that I have no idea how to do, but I'm sure when I figure it out, it'll be really great. Yes. Welcome right? to so, my next two weeks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, as a matter of fact, yes, the next two weeks. That yeah. was actually like in 2008. Wow. Mm. You know, so, um, yeah. Um, and then we got the idea, I got the funding, and then I realized, oh, now I have to do this. And, you know, I had known Pamela sort of casually in the way that like all astronomers kind of know each other right. casually at that point. And I actually came up to her, and since she's not here I can embarrass her, at, at this AAS meeting. And, and I walked up and said, hi Pamela. And she's like, hi, who are you? So, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, uh, yeah, hi, I, I, I'm doing the show and I really like uh, you know, your help with it. And you can see her going, okay. And I say, and I have money to support you. And she's like, I like money. <laughs> <laughs> she became very excited um, because I, I realized yeah, yeah. one of the smart things I did realize at the beginning was, look, if you're going to do this, you do need to put funding in for personnel. You know, you, I mean, people's time is valuable. Mm. And lot, every astronomer is, is already doing a lot of good, interesting things, or they wouldn't be successful astronomers, right? And so, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I would get a really high quality person. And Pamela was, you know, very enthusiastic and we started talking about it. And the actual production part from when we start, seriously, like from writing the script to the final version of the show was about 22 months. Okay. Now, there were periods in that time where we didn't, you know, there was like two or three months where there was a gap. So it really wasn't 22 months. And I actually think, you know, my goal for the next show is like, can we do it in about a year? I think we could do it in a year, realistically. And that's, yeah. 22, that's not 22 months full time, that's 22 no. months or something. No, 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 no. definitely not, right? No, there, it wasn't like 22 yeah. months shooting schedule or anything like that. No. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, my schedule, um, Pamela's schedule, Pat's schedule, you know, I mean, it, uh, you know, good, you know, people are already busy, right? And so this yeah. sort of had to get slipped in with everything else. Yeah, this wasn't anybody's full time work. 
Yeah. Uh, although for a while there, kept uh, Kurt, Annie, kept, kept, kept yeah. Kurt and, and Annie our uh, you know call out to uh, our uh, student assistant here at the Planetarium who did a lot of the uh, uh, production work, and uh, she was the one who sort of kept tab. And she's the one who really looked at the images and went scenes and went, no, I need to do something different here. Okay. And she and, got obsessed with grass for a while. Um, yeah, you know, rendering out grass in a digital form is actually really difficult, <laughs> and she became a little obsessed. Not a lot obsessed. No, a lot obsessed. But I mean, That's but but she was she wanted her grass to be realistic looking yeah. grass, and yeah. it turns out that's actually really hard to do. Yeah. yeah. So you know, if we come in, you gotta be like. That looks slightly better than last time. She's like, it's not good enough. I'm like, Annie, this is the 15th time. Render the scene. Yeah. You have to stop now. You have to let it go. Yeah. But again, but again, it goes back to the key thing is that everybody, I mean, this is one of the, the, the fun collaborations that I can think of going back, in, you know, not only with this project, but my, you know, a lot of my scientific work with collaborators in the past and currently is, you know, everybody in this project, it's like everybody, you know, you know, we chat, you know, everybody has fun. It wasn't like one of these, oh, like you're doing a job. So it never, that's why the 22 months never felt like, you know, just some large production schedule. It's kind of like, oh yeah, how would this work? And then when, you know, Kurt and Annie would come up with a bit and we'd look at it and see, and, uh, you know, Pamela obviously did the uh, fantastic voice work and, and did a lot of the, you know, a lot of the script work as well. So it was kind of, you know, it's one of those things where everybody involved in the project, uh, Including your two hosts of this program, um, you know, have uh, put in a lot amount of work to uh, to make it a success. Yeah. Well, I feel like I came in late. I started working with Cosmo Quest, and you guys are almost done with the show itself. Well, the first show. I mean, the thing is, is it's always the version of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It 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 really started to to take a form a lot later in later in that time mm -hmm. in that twenty two month period. Right. right. So. Um, and it's a key thing, and uh, that we really wanted to, to do it. We want it to be fun. I mean, the thing is, you know, why are you know what are they? We're always asked, why do you do science? Well, it's fun. Right. And science is yeah, like, fun. What is the point to, of doing that? Yeah, and, and it's so it's so making a show like that isn't supposed to be, you know, oh yeah, I got to work on that show. No, you want it to be fun. So the idea of this 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 extended group who made the show happen is fun, and that's what we want to say at the end of the day. Did you have fun making Cosmic Cast Weeks? Yeah, we did. And it was, it was definitely a learning experience, too, I would say, right? I mean, I certainly know a lot more about this now than I did when I wrote the grant, for sure. Oh, yeah. And I know Kurt has told me that, you know, uh, you know, he's learned an incredible amount about rendering the show. I know Annie has basically become a Jedi master in Blender. Blender. Um, I'm now learning how to market the show, which is, you know, something I never learned. I mean, I didn't take a marketing class in undergraduate or graduate school. Usually but, not in the astronomy curriculum. <laughs> no, um, no. And so learning how to tell people about this show without sort of being a jerk about it. Um, because I want people, you know, I want people, you know, if they, if they don't like the show, you know, that makes me sad. It makes me cry. But the the, the key thing is that... You don't want to make them cry, guys. Come on. <laughs> it's not pretty. Yeah, it's ugly. But, um, you know, what we want also is to learn. And... Um, you know, because our hope is to do more than one of these shows, right? Mm -hmm. We kind of are sort of building up an infrastructure of, we have kind of three or four ideas, so I, I now begin to feel like I'm in Hollywood, you know, pitching to some producer, <laughs> but we actually have a couple of ideas that we think would be really interesting shows that we don't think a lot of other planetarium companies will do. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess that's important to say, is that there actually are professional planetarium companies. They do this full time. And we're not going to be able to compete with them because they do that full time. Yes, and they I mean, have, you know, like we love Pamela, but they have like Morgan Freeman doing voice. Yeah, so, yeah, Liam Neeson. <laughs> and shows, they have a number of people doing the animations and things like this. Yeah, yeah right. Absolutely. These are basically Hollywood productions, and yeah, yeah we're not. Our show, our show is not, uh, you know, Transformers, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, <laughs> for example. Um, but, but, you know, the idea is that, you know, we want to do shows that, you know, things that are scientifically interesting but are kind of off the beaten path. Planetarium mm -hmm. shows tend to be sort of a couple standard subjects like the solar system and constellations and black, black holes. holes. <laughs> and, right, black and, holes. And, Everyone and those are all awesome, right? I'm yeah. actually not down on black no. holes. But 
there are 10 shows about black holes, so us doing an 11th show is not really a good idea. Well, because that's the first thing people ask you when they find out you're an astronomer. It's like, what about black holes? You know, that's, (laughs) those are those topics that those shows tend to hit. But there's a lot more cool science going on. Yeah, there's a lot more cool science going on. And, uh, and, and, and part of it is, I mean, I mean, we've been involved with uh, education, public outreach for a while. And it's, it's always this thing, you know, okay, I think I do interesting stuff. uh, But, you know, how do I get that across to people? I mean, no one's going to ask. So, what about stars between the galaxies? It doesn't roll <laughs> off the tongue like, "Hey, what about black holes?" Mm, you know. Right. It, so, so we want to give people sort of this broad idea of there's a basically there's a lot of neat things out here. There is actually more to the universe than black holes, uh, as important as they are. Um, and anybody watching really likes black holes. Yeah, we are okay. black holes. We're black holes. <laughs> yeah, I work out uh, black holes. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but it's, uh, it, it, it's it's that there are other cool stories to tell. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And, 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 and we were in a unique position to tell that story. Right. I mean, we're, we're yeah. you know, this is this is an area of research that there's not, you know, it's not like there's hundreds of astronomers working on the problem of stars between the galaxies. But there should be. So, <laughs> yeah, if they want to really follow the cool stuff, yeah. But I agree. but there aren't at the moment. So it's not like other people were going to come. So it's like, well, we've done this. We, we you know we have this beautiful planetarium here. We know some really good people. Well, you know, we can do this. And uh, and then at the end of the day, it's nice to see that you know the show is now done, and uh, you know it's uh, and 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 now it's it's really about um, making it useful, right? That that's and that's really what the educational stuff does, yeah. right? And that's a whole nother, you know, um, for all the educators in the office, like. I just learned like what the next generation science standards were. <laughs> Welcome like, to our world. Four months ago, <laughs> and I saw like the diagrams like in this colorful book, and I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, uh, this goes yeah, that was so like, complicated. Wow. Yeah, I remember the meeting, and I remember promptly because I had no idea what was going on. Tracking down George. <laughs> oh wait, this was in the see. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was talking about Georgia. Okay, what does this mean? I have no idea. <laughs> right, so th- this is another example of like, you can't do this by yourself. There's no one person on the planet. Well, maybe Bamba, but very other few people on the planet who do all of these pieces, right? right? And so, again, it's get the best people, work with them, and, and, and make the show even better. So I want to talk about the educational side, but I want to first uh, share a comment from uh, Guido Bibra, our buddy Guido, uh, over in Germany, who is apparently looking at Jupiter right now through a telescope while listening to us. So yay! Oh, um, that's cool. Very nice. Nice spherical Earth. I wonder if the show would work on a really big cinema screen, maybe an IMAX theater. We show Cosmic Castaways as the opening act for the upcoming Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Wow. Excellent. <laughs> now there's marketing and then there's thinking big. That, that is, I, I respect his thinking big. big. I do, I um, do. Unfortunately, we made it at, uh, also because uh, we don't have the same uh, computing facilities as some of the larger ones. Are it's not really in the. Um, I wouldn't say it's in the highest resolution you can get. Like for example, the show right. we made it, you couldn't show it uh, on uh, some of the new 4K systems that are. Uh, four by four thousand uh, pixel systems that are getting out there. Yeah, I think it would kind of look like Minecraft on, a, <laughs> on an IMAX. There'd be these giant pixels. Um, I, you know, parts of it might work, and I think you know, it's not crazy to think about doing one of these shows on IMAX. I suspect this, we, the the material, it, it can only be as good as the material that we get. Right. Right. So, I mean, for example, one of the scenes, and this is where I can do a shout out to. Uh, Another colleague of ours, uh, Frank Sumners, he's at the Space Telescope Science Institute, and he put together this beautiful montage of interacting galaxies and then interspersing them with images from the Hubble Space Telescope of real galaxies yes, to yes, sort of show how the movie and the images fit together. And we saw this, we saw this thing that he'd done separately. He said, "This is great," and we actually talked to him and said, "Hey, can you give us a copy?" And he said, "Sure, here's the copy." And we said, "Actually, we need the highest resolution you can get." And he said, oh, that's like down in the basement somewhere. And we were like, okay. And then like a week later, he's like, here's the 50 gigs, you know, of the highest resolution. And he shipped it all to us. And so, you know, thank you very much, Frank. Um, You know, but 
you know, the source, you know, you can't do better than the original source material. Right. And, and so this is one of these things where I think in the future we can do even better. But I think for this show, I think IMAX would We're look, not IMAX, IMAX right. would look like, I think it would look like surreal art. We'd have to change the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. If we could get the Blue Man group <laughs> or something like that. Is that really necessary? Sure, why not? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, anyway, I mean, I, 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 yeah. I think it would be, I would love to see my film on IMAX, but, well, not my film, the R film. <laughs> Boy, I, I'm not <laughs> my film. Teamwork, teamwork, um, teamwork, my film. Yeah, teamwork, my film, yeah. Um, I'd love to see the, whole the thing. film. <laughs> the film. On IMAX, but I suspect it wouldn't look good enough. Mm -hmm. Except mm -hmm. maybe Frank Sumner's part. <laughs> yes, I think Frank Sumner's part would look awesome, yeah. but you know, yeah. Okay. Frank, yeah. Frank, Frank actually has done an IMAX astronomy mm -hmm. film. I think he's yeah. one of the few people who has. Yeah, I mean, you, you, normally with I, speaking specifically to IMAX, yeah, you've got to start off with that in mind. Right. Yeah, it's, I mean, IMAX is not something you can just sort of convert things thereafter, mm, uh, yeah. like <clears throat> 3D movies. Um, yeah, um, you know, it's really hard to do <laughs> convert it <laughs> after the fact. Mm -hmm. so, you guys, um, can you talk about your next idea? I know you you have at least one, or is that sort well, of a secret? No, thing? they're not secret at all. Um, <laughs> the, there's sort of two that I guess I, I I'd like to mention. One from each of us. So one of them, one of the things I do besides these stars that are kicked out of galaxies is just very distant galaxies, mm -hmm. or sometimes astronomers say high redshift galaxies, and mm -hmm. I. I work with a group of people who study a certain type of these galaxies. And you know, there's not actually a really good show about how do we find distant galaxies anyway. And so these galaxies tend to be called faint fuzzies. So the sort of working title of the show would be faint fuzzies. Nice. <laughs> and it just be it just be like, how do we find these things at, at very high redshift or very early in the cosmic past? And Pat wants to do a show about globular clusters. Globular clusters. <laughs> You want to talk? About Nobody that? says that in Canada. I've never heard anyone else say <laughs> globular clusters. One right. person does, and his name One is Bruce Kane. One person. <laughs> right. Do you want to talk about that? Or yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the other things that I work on, along with stars get ripped out of galaxies, I study globular clusters. Um, these uh, these massive star clusters that live in the suburbs of galaxies. Uh, they're very dense, um, very dense star clusters of hundreds of thousands of stars in a small volume of space. And they're rather old, so they've been around for, you know, almost the length of the age of the universe. So they tell us something about the early conditions of galaxies, and we've always thought about doing something. And Pamela, by the way, has done work in the past on globular clusters, so this is something of mutual interest to us, uh, between the two of us, um, to do a show about, you know, instead of stars ripped out of galaxies, imagine what it would be like if you could actually go into, into a globular cluster where there are just stars everywhere. Oh my gosh, to be on a planet? Circling yeah, that, that's, that's sort of the visual. You know, that would be kind of visual. The hard part is trying to come up how best to actually do that. But, uh, you know, so now we're, instead of talking about, you know, intergalactic space where there's very few stars in an area, in a region of space, but then going the other direction, looking at these globular clusters where, I mean, uh, if you look at nice pictures, for example, uh, you know, a Space Telescope, beautiful picture of M80. Uh, people want to Google that. You know, it's these dense, dense balls yeah. of stars and imagine what it would be like to be in a planet near the center of one of those things. I yeah, mean, you're, yeah, you would have stars almost everywhere you look. Everywhere you look. Yeah. yeah, and that would be a cool... And, and that's, of course, remember, you're doing a show, so you want to think about visuals mm -hmm. a lot. You know, I mean, uh, you want to think about something that will just knock people's socks off. Yeah, like we're not going to do a 20-minute show on reducing data. <laughs> And this is how you put oh, time. <laughs> what a challenge yeah. that would be, though. I wrap the movie. Apes uh, the movie. Apes movie. the movie. Apes the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's a sort of thing. How does the research get done? That's, Somebody's just yeah. typing away. Somebody tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Damn. The figure looks horrible. Damn. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people staring at computers and swearing. And, and it, yeah, it would have to be not safe for work because you would definitely not be safe for work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, right? But you know, so that, you know, there are lots of cool ideas, and the thing, and part of the idea is, you know, by having a show where we, you know, have, you know, we're talking about the research that you know we and our colleagues work on. It's kind of like, well, you know, you sort of put the touch on it, especially when you give it to our local audiences here in Youngstown. You know, yeah, this is what we work on. Real people work on this kind of thing. It's not some sort of weird, abstract thing. You know, real scientists are real people working on really, really neat things, and we want to get again part of that out there. 
Yeah. Very cool. So we That's wanted to talk about the educational materials yes. as well that we started on. So you guys came to us and were like, stuff, things. <laughs> Right, we had we had a, um, some ideas on on how to uh, bring this into the classroom, and I think the way Pamela phrased it is: imagine you're a substitute teacher, and you're like filling in for two days. You want to show this movie and put stuff around it. You know, what well, what do you want right. to do? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Maybe I don't know if you guys want to. You guys know more about that than I. Well, I can I can I can show. You I guys can, want to talk about your process? That would be kind of cool. Yeah, I can show you guys for the. So we 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 um. Gosh, I, I don't quite know if there was a process involved, Georgia. Or if it was <laughs> well, there kind of—I mean, there is, and it's actually—it's. We know more about that. It kind well, of mimics what you guys did in creating your show out of your research. So you have to sit there and, and think, you know, what are the big ideas that you want to get across to the students? Because it's really easy to, you know, pull in all the information and write all kinds of stuff and throw all kinds of gobs of vocabulary out there, but. You know, you'll hit people with that, and then the next day they'll have no idea what happened and what they did or heard. So, you know, it's it's down to trying to get the big ideas, which actually is very much in line with the new science standards also. So that is what part of the NGSS is all about, is going for the big ideas in all the disciplines instead of all the, you know, little stuff. So that's really the first thing that we did. You know, we watched the trailer, watched the whole thing, actually, and then, you know, tried to pull out, you know, what are the big things that mm -hmm. people could walk away with and that we'd want to emphasize and find activities that could help us um, teach that, and, and then started, you know, working with those concepts. So... It was very similar, probably, to how you think about maybe starting to put yeah. a show together. You know, yeah, I, I would say the main so. points. Well, it's certainly complementary because you know, again, you know, we didn't want to stuff every last thing into a 22-minute show, and we didn't want to put every little buzzword, every little fancy thing, every little thing we could possibly throw in about, you know, uh, you know, stars between the galaxies. Uh, and the same is true for the education materials. If you just, you know, dump this whole bunch of stuff on the students, at the end of the day, what are they going to get out of? It? Nero, zip, nada, bupkis, you know, right. and, you know, you want them to come out with something. So yeah, that's we, right. But, you know, you don't want to lose any of that either. So, in a way, it's, it's kind of finding a good balance. You, you know, for those students who really get grabbed by this and they want to know more, um, and teachers as well, you know, you want to have the, the resources and the way that they can get further into the content if they want to. So. Mm. Um, you know, so having just extra resources available or like we did, we had some activities that really, you know, were more basic and then also some that, you know, were more advanced. Um, just yeah. you know, to kind of cover the range and for those that want to go further. What so what is, sorry. Oh, so I, I just wanted to say when, um, so what happened when I, I looked at, I watched Cosmic Cast Stories again with the idea of, okay, what main ideas do we want to get out of this now? We can we attach to activity. And I remembered that I had seen this applet back in the day where you can make little simulations of galaxies that crash together. And I'm like, oh my god, we should totally use that, use this activity. Completely unaware of the fact <laughs> that this applet was written by Chris Mijos, who you worked with in order to <laughs> yes. make a movie. Yes. So that was a perfect fit because I immediately went, oh my god, we're using this app and we're doing this. And that's the, uh, the Gal Crash app. Which, yeah, um, I, I, I'm gonna, let me do a shout out for Gal Crash. So Gal yeah. Crash <laughs> is a, a Java applet that was written by Chris Mijos and his collaborators actually quite a while ago. It, it's actually, you know, even though I think the applet is maybe five or six years old or even older, it's, older it, it, it's, it's beyond, it was well ahead of its time. And <laughs> the great thing about it is it lets students of any level or any normal person crash galaxies. <laughs> and how cruel is that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and and it, it runs on basically any computer. And if you just Google Gal Crash for anybody mm. who wants to try it, they can try it for themselves and crash galaxies. Don't and do it on Chrome. Don't do it. Well, don't do it on Sorry, Chrome. doesn't work on Chrome. Oh, okay. Well, Google. Google. I have it open um, on Safari. Yeah. Oh wait, then we get cut off. Um, so, um, uh, so one of the things I really liked about uh, what George and Nicole did is they came up with a very Sophisticated, you know. I mean, you can just sort of use Galcraft, sort of like you know, like a little kid, and push random buttons and see what happens, and that's fun. But they actually built a, a set of exercises, so like a, a bunch of high school students or a bunch of astronomy 101 students 
could use it and actually gain a lot of insight about how real galaxies interact with each other. And I, I you know, I went through it myself, and I was like, wow, that's just, you know, I, I, it took me about. I don't know, half an hour to do all the exercises myself. And I'm like, this is pretty nice. It's very sophisticated. And oh, thank you. Yeah, nice. It, start, it started by me playing with it and <laughs> making crashing noises. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> I'm but glad that's how, and the end product but, appears sophisticated. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, no. But that's that's how this is supposed to yeah, work. I mean, yeah. we want people. We want people to you know have the same amazement and same fun with it. That we do. I mean, we work in this field. We see this stuff a lot, and we're still like, "Oh, what happens if I change this? Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool." You know, you can do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the only thing. Yeah, the only thing the Apple doesn't have is sound effects. Uh, yeah, you have to help to supply your yourself. Own. It should, but you know, I, Chris is working on that. But so I can hear you crash in space. Yes. No idea. They're, they're, they're space I did no take one once. Crash. I did take once. I did take one of Chris's. Uh, uh, low res animations and put the sound of a car crashing to it. Uh, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> nice. But but the you know the other the other pieces I, I like just as much because I mean the truth is very few people, you know, if you say to a normal person, hey draw a galaxy, you know, just hand them a piece of paper mm -hmm. and, and a pencil, most people don't really know. They don't and, and you know we have our own model. I'm gonna go grab our Milky Way model in just a second, right? Okay. You know, because we have our own we have our own version of George's uh, uh, great galaxy mm -hmm. that I pass around to my students, and it's actually just amazing that they're like, "We live inside that," and you're like, "Yes, yeah. you do." So I'm gonna grab it. Okay. So go ahead and fill, grab it. Fill the time. <laughs> I have a picture, so oh, I'm, good. I'm going. Oh, try. great! I'm, I'm going solo. This is great. Um, <laughs> I also tried to do. Dave, that. if you tell someone to draw a galaxy, somebody's yeah. gonna draw a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm oh, just no, saying. That's there's just a little. So sad. Oh. A little bit of confusion there, but no, uh, yeah. That galaxy. Draw a well, it's like a box. It's kind of like that. Okay, well there you go. There's a galaxy. Yeah. So, here. This is this is our toy version. I'm gonna see. Oh, you yours guys came out see. much better than mine. Yeah. Well, we so we used foam, just so, uh, so anybody knows, the styrofoam. And and so this is what the Milky Way galaxy sort of looks like, right? And you have to remember, of course, the uh, sun is very small, right? It's smaller than like a yeah. grain of sand on this. Mm -hmm. But I like the three dimensionality of this thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And one of the things I, you know, I didn't build this. I just get to use it. Is ours? You can detach it. Who built it? Oh. Uh, our, one of our planetarium engineers. So oh, you can okay. actually pull it out like a piece of pie, and you oh. say, "Well, the sun is here." Oh, I right? like it. And so you can explain the way the Milky Way looks. Yeah. You can say. So I mean, but this, you know, we teach this to college students, and they're amazed by this thing. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're like, wow! Right? So, I mean, I, I think one of the nice things about, you know, what we're trying to do with our educational materials is we try to hit it from different angles, and so yep. people can pick and choose what they want to use. Yeah. Yeah, give a range, give a choice, and, you know, don't underestimate the power of a simple model like that. So no. I'm going to show you guys my model. It's amazing what it, it elicits from people, <laughs> and it's just this simple little thing. Did I only did oh, I, I only did the top half, um, I like it. but I went to Michael's and went to town on the glitter and the cotton. Um, <laughs> the bulge, I think, is a little off center. <laughs> and, uh, it's a tiny disturbed galaxy. That's what you talk about. It's, it's a bar. It's a bar anyway. <laughs> so, you know, oh, please don't go there. But I do. Oh, I just did. <laughs> I, I color coded the glitter based on where it was. So the, the only place you find blue glitter is in the spiral arms. So I was yes. very careful to do yes. that. So it's only nice place to those young stuff. You're an overachiever for sure. A little bit. Yeah. So that's my attempt. I need. To, uh, we wanted to make a nice one to photograph to put in there. I'm gonna ask you guys for the photograph of yours because mine sucks. <laughs> okay, we can do that. But I, I, I think, like I think that. we might use yours instead. I don't know. But uh, yeah. So that that that's my model galaxy that I made. This Excellent. Week. So yeah, I mean, I, I think um, it's in, it's really important to mm -hmm. you know. Because we, we we're trying to make it accessible, right? So you want to hit people where they're at, right. and you know, depending on the school and the environment, and you know what state they're in and what they're covering, you you, you don't want to set things up so that people can't use the thing. Otherwise, and to us, that's like a giant waste of everybody's time. Yeah, and, and I think uh, we're talking about adding a, a third activity that's classifying the galaxy shapes. Yeah, through the different steps of of interaction, because that's another. 
That's non computer my activity. It's a higher level non computer activity that, that's another choice yeah. as well. And, and one of the cool things, and one of the things I, I, I think we want to do next, going back to what some of the things Georgia asked, is now we have a whole other uh, series of tests, right? Mm -hmm. Is that we're really interested now in, in finding high schools and astronomy 101 classes that might use this and then give us feedback. Because yeah. one of the joys of the net is, of course, is that you know if we find out it's not working, we can rewrite it and put it back up on the web. So I, I'm hoping, knock on wood, we're, we're looking into finding uh, good testers that can give us feedback on how useful the material is. Yeah, that's really important because there's nothing mm -hmm. like planning it all out in your head and then when you actually go through and do it with people, it's a whole different yeah. Ball game, and uh, yeah, you'll get a lot of good feedback, and you can share that with us because we like to. Oh move. yes, I'm yeah. already planning on roping in the high school teachers that come to my star parties. <laughs> yeah, yes. There you go. So, yeah, that's so important. Yep. Come here, come here, come here. Let's run some galaxies together. Yeah. Okay. This is free, but it's not really free. Free hit. Free hit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so this, um, so we're finalizing that now. It's not available yet, but it will be within the next couple of weeks, I think, on our site. Uh, Georgia just yep. put a yeah, post yeah. about it in the education newsletter. So you can get on our monthly education newsletter. Um, if you go to CosmoQuest.org and Educator Zone, there's a little form at the bottom. You can put in your email address. Um, but if you email us at educate at CosmoQuest.org, Yep, or if you just ping one of us, um, we we'll can send you the Check work in the progress for it. Yeah, and the final, um, the final version when it's done. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, and, and, you know, we're, we're very excited about. It. And I guess the, the one, the one last thing I want to say, because I guess we're getting near the end, is mm -hmm. you know we we are really interested in everybody's feedback, just feedback about the show, feedback about the education stuff, because we're hoping to do many of these in the future. <laughs> right? This is just the first one. And the way we get better is by getting real feedback from people, just like our students, right? And um, you know, we we need to know what worked for you guys and what didn't work for you, so that we can do something better in the future. Yeah, that was my last deep thought. Do, you, do you have a deep thought? No deep thoughts. I just wanted to thank the people who sent comments in. Again, active yeah. feedback. <laughs> active feedback, so, right? Yeah, on this. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's see. Some Keep other the comments we rolling. had. Uh, somebody. Oh, Michael Jobin wants to know where are the costumes. He was expecting cosplay because it's Halloween. Oh, I've <laughs> dyed my hair. We they like, have decorations. Like my class. Do you want to yeah. go You have a new question. I pass out. We have decorations. We pass out candy today in our classes. Oh, the I students love it. Uh, somebody. Yeah, simple things. Oh, yeah. And then he said, there's no place like Dome. Thank you, Michael. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I know someone was having a problem with the Ward Beecher website, but I just logged on to it, and it seemed okay. So try that again. Looks fine to me. Um, yeah, uh, WBplanetarium.org. WBplanetarium.org. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, we had a request for date of reduction, the opera. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a tragedy. For it would be a tragedy. It would be a tragedy. Somebody would die in the end. Somebody and would die. And definitely it would not, it would not be PG. Dies. It would definitely... Everybody dies. <laughs> it's like Shakespeare and or Joss Whedon. It's it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Nobody yeah. Wants but, but Joss Whedon could write the script for us. Oh, I love then, uh, that idea. I just Tom, love that. Tom Nath also says, how about a show on pronunciation of astronomy objects? Oh, oh, that could get, <laughs> oh, boy, that could get a lot of... Yeah. yeah. Starting with globular clusters. <laughs> or, or that I only say between, that because of Fraser. <laughs> or it's planet between Neptune and, and Saturn, for example. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah. That yeah. One? It's been the butt of jokes for years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you for your all. Excellent. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so, I'm gonna. Yeah, there's some good ideas way. there. <laughs> You guys crack me up. I miss you guys. You guys are so much fun. <laughs> well, come visit us sometime. I should come visit. You know, we, should, awesome. we, should, we, should, we should invite you guys. You'd be, be glad for you guys to come up sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, yes, and we're going to see the planetarium. We just, yeah. we just yeah. inflated, we just used our Star Lab, our inflatable Star Lab for the first time last night. Yeah, it was the first inflation. 
Here well, it was second inflation because they told Oh, it wasn't? Oh. Yeah, Colin tested it on campus. Oh. You guys never tell me anything. I right, wasn't I'm here. I, I, I'm sorry. And then well, shortly, um, shortly after the Big Bang, there was this immense period yes. of inflation. <laughs> it was the inflationary yeah. epic. It was the inflationary <laughs> epic, yeah. <laughs> the inflationary <laughs> epic, and then it collapsed a little, and then oh. we had to inflate it again. Um, <laughs> we had our first public outing of the Star Lab last night. Um, good so rule, good rule. How many people did you guys get? Um, it was for Teen Science Cafe. I think there were like 24, 25, 26 high school students there so in the evening. Um, I gave a talk about Moon Mappers, and then I did mm. the planetarium show. So, yeah. Cool. It was a two-hour event, and I lost my voice. It was great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. That's back. part of the game. That's that part of good the stuff. Yeah. Good, good things. Yes. So, uh, so yeah, I think that's mostly it for this show. When I go over the current schedule, so Friday afternoon, uh, we have the weekly space hangout at noon Pacific, and there will be a special Comet Islands full show. I think Fraser's going to be broadcasting from Vancouver Science Center. I don't remember off the name exactly. He's broadcasting from somewhere cool, uh, and a bunch of us will be um, giving our Comet Ison updates and observations, as well as our usual weekly space news. So that's Noon Pacific on Friday. Um, I think nine nine or 9.30 Pacific on Sunday night will be the virtual star party, so it's getting earlier. Actually, since Daylight Saving starts on Sunday, I'll have to double check that time yeah. with them and yeah. maybe pushing it back, pulling it back to 8 Pacific. So, um, yeah, a virtual star party. And then uh, Monday at, two, at noon Pacific, I can't do the time zones in my head, um, Fraser and Pamela record an episode of Astronomy Cast live on Hangouts on Air. And then we roll back around to next Wednesday's Learning Space, which might be about the do-it-yourself science zone that we did at Geek Girl Con, if I can rope enough people into ah. that. So that may be next week's topic. I'm not sure yet. Uh, is this the edible science stuff? That sounded really cool. No, but I did that at that same con. Um, uh. We could do something. Yeah, I did a whole panel of edible science demos, so everybody got Oreos. It was great. <laughs> that's, that's really oh, cool. It was a fun <laughs> panel. I had, like, no presentation, and it was like, here's a box of Oreos. <laughs> we need to come up with an edible galaxy activity. Yeah, we should work on that. Okay. We can make it out of Milky Way bars. Well, of course. Oh. Yeah. The Milky Way bar in the Oh, my God. Okay. Corporate sponsorship. <laughs> wah, wah. We need to get out of cotton candy. I was because, you know, I'm, I, made, I made, yeah, cotton candy. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, we could do that. So we, we need to do an edible galaxy because most of the stuff I did was planetary. Okay. okay. All right. That sounds. I'm, I'm going to volunteer to help you on this. Okay. <laughs> so maybe we'll do that. So we'll we we'll have to have an edible astronomy show at some point. Um, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Cool. All right. So thank you guys so much for joining us here yeah, on Space. Thank you. Oh, it's been our pleasure. Awesome. It's yes. Fun. Obviously, fun. if you are if you are live in the Youngstown area, you should go check out their planetarium. Uh, I hope to visit you guys soon someday. Good. And if you guys are in the Edwardsville area, we have a Star Lab now. We haven't figured out a system of reservations for it yet, but it exists. <laughs> Theoretically, we have people trained on, on. We can work on that. Yeah, yeah. The, it's yeah. like, oh, I know how to use it, but I'm always busy, so we'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah, it out. More, more yeah. people. It'll be good. All right. So thank Excellent. you guys. Bye guys. Bye now. Bye. 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 Oops. Oops. Wait.